every year, two million women are diagnosed around the world with breast cancer and 600,000 die. The statistics are really, really striking. And it's a crisis that we have tried very hard to address through better imaging tools, teaching people around the world how to read mammograms. Um, and it's a, a challenge. So I had an opportunity uh, to move to Boston and I knew there would be a lot of change as I moved from the West Coast to the East Coast. What I didn't know that I would meet this fantastic woman, uh, Regina Barzillay. She had just finished her own breast cancer treatment at the age of 42. She was quite young when she was diagnosed, had a young son. And uh, one of the men that recruited me to MGH and Harvard said, you've got to meet this patient of mine. You two will do great things together. And I wasn't sure why, so we met. And she could not believe, as a computer science expert in our artificial intelligence at MIT, how little information was available to guide her treatment. She also, in her own personal story, realized that at 40, she had her first mammogram. Uh, they said she had dense breast tissue, but not to worry about it, that most women do. 50% of women are told they have dense breast tissue. At 41, the same thing. At 42, they said, we, we see something on your mammogram. So you can see here, uh, Regina, she went through her treatment and also her mammogram. And as we studied her mammograms together, she said, could we have seen it last year or even the year before with better tools? Could we see it as distinct from all that dense normal tissue that I have? And uh, so we started our journey together using the tools of AI. She took her entire lab at MIT that was not working in the healthcare domain, shifted the whole group over to tackling our most challenging problems for our patients in breast cancer. And uh, we tackled problems that our patients face using large, large databases that we have in Boston at Mass General Hospital and the technologies that they had developed at MIT and deep learning. So we found that we could um, find cancers earlier and also that we could use techniques to find those cancers before humans were finding them. So it wasn't unique to Regina that you could look back and say, maybe that was the cancer developing then. That's true in about 30% of breast cancers that are diagnosed. And what we realized that every woman's mammogram is unique to her, like a thumbprint. And we could, just in the way that we saw how you could take hundreds of thousands of images and sort dogs from cats, we could take hundreds of thousands of images of mammograms and because they're unique to each woman, we knew the outcomes of those women in the future, we could train the model to know this is a woman who will develop cancer in the future, and this is a woman who will not develop breast cancer in the future. Many years before a human could see anything on that mammogram that looked like a cancer. So we weren't using old school CAD, where computer data detection, where we would teach the machine to learn what a cancer looks like, we were giving many tens of thousands of mammograms with known outcomes to the machine and letting the machine learn from cues and signals that we were not teaching it. What we found in our model was that we could predict into the future for women in ways that none of our existing risk models could do. Uh, we had our training set and our testing set and then when we actually implemented it into a large group of women we found that we could predict the future much better than any existing models. And most importantly, we removed the racial disparities that we have been plagued with in my, my field. Mm -hmm.